So welcome back to Orchid House. I'm Olivier in Fort Lauderdale and today I not only want to tell you how I care for my Stanopia Impressa but I also want to explain the morphology of a Stanopia flower which I think is fascinating. So this is the baby, Stanopia Impressa. Uh, a plant is doesn't have a brain i mean it's supposed to be stupid i mean it's attached somewhere it can't move so it's very vulnerable and yet these plants have evolved over millions of years and developed strategies that are quite astounding and this is the story of the stanopia that i want to uh, tell you today uh the first of all the stanopia is a big issue the flowers don't last very long that's that's always a problem so usually two days uh, that the flowers will remain fresh they, they might be around a little bit longer but they are really fresh only two days and the reason is that the plant needs to develop another, a lot of energy to develop these flowers i mean it's a very intricate flower also the fragrance is extremely powerful you smell it from feet away and there's a reason for that that's the strategy that they have developed to uh, survive and uh, what's even more fascinating is that the majority of these stanopias have specialized in one single type of bee uh, for their survival and they've developed a shape and a fragrance that specifically caters to that bee. So that's what the bee wants and that is the shape of the bee's uh, body. So what happens to so the typical uh, structure of a stanopia flower, you have the epichyle here at the base, which is the landing platform for the bee. You have these horns. So the bee lands here on the, the platform. The horns guide the bee into the hypochyle, which is uh, there at, at uh, the top. In between, you have the mesochyle, which is really very important to identify uh, the species, the way it's, it's, it's uh, uh, structured. But the thing is that the fragrance is right there inside. And so what the bee wants is to go there. So the only way in for the bee, land on the epichyle, be guided by the horn, and then uh, end up in the, in the sack there and the bee goes crazy it's like a drunken sailor it's the fragrance is exactly what the bee wants it's super happy it's gonna go back home get laid with ma'am because there's always a male bee that does that <laughs> and that's what uh, al allows the reproduction of the bee but it also allows the reproduction of the stanopia flower the reason is that once it's inside there the bee is kind of uh, staggering like the drunken sailor and so the only way out is here and then it goes against the column, column and at the, the end of the column you have the pollen and the pollen is going to remain stuck to the, the bee's back and the bee flies away and then goes to another flower and can pollinate the other flower. But what's stunning is that the fragrance is exactly the fragrance that that bee likes and the, the shape of the flower is perfect to accommodate the shape of the bee. And they all specialize in different bees. Now some have only one bee, others have several pollinators some species we've never really discovered yet who pollinates them, but they are typically euglossian bees. So I find that fascinating. Now, uh, as far as care is concerned, I, I would say something else uh, before that. So what's characteristic of stanopias is that they are highly variable, especially with colors, and even the morphology is not perfectly identical from one flower to another. Impresa is a bit of a, a, a different animal. Uh, because the color is extremely stable from one plant to another and also the morphology is pretty much identical from one flower to another. So what's characteristic, because the only way to identify a stanopia is its, the, the shape of the, the morphology of its lip. So what I can say in terms of the, the easiest uh, uh, items to identify to determine is an impressa. So you have, first of all, that hypochyle, which is completely orange uh, with faded red eye spots. You see, you have these are small eyes, eye spots, actually, uh, and they are not so faded, but that's, that's uh, what the, uh, the Impressa has. Uh, the sepals are very uh, concolor, so they have these uh, beige or white colors. There's only a few red spots at the base, at best. The petals are always recurved from the get-go. I mean, most stanopias have that, but this one, as, over, as soon as it opens, they recurve right away. Uh, the hypochyle here, this is very saccate, as they say, so it's a real sac, so it's deep. You see, it's, it's fat, it has a fat butt. 
Uh, some stenopias are very slender. I mean, there's, there's hardly any hole in there, so it's, it's very flat. This one is very deep. And then another important thing, I, I hope you can show that. So you see the, uh, the width of the hypochyle and the width of the epichyle is the same. So this is a straight line, basically. Uh, sometimes uh, some of these apocalypse are way wider than the epichyle. In this case, it's really uh, the same width uh, through and through. So those are ways uh, to identify uh, the impressa. The, 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 the knee that they call, so the, the, the link between the hypochyle and the mesochyle, is uh, the most important part. I've mm, so far not been able to manage the, uh, the vocabulary that goes with it. I think it's pretty crazy the way they describe that. that. But anyway, so uh, this is a fairly large, uh, Stanopas are large plants. I mean, they grow fast. This is a young plant. I bought it only eight or 10 months ago. Uh, this plant grows in Ecuador and Southern Colombia. That's where it's from. Uh, the variability is really in the size of the plant and the flowers. So it's still a young plant, so I have to figure out how big it's going to get. Uh, in terms of care, so stenopias, typically they are shade plants or low light plants. Uh, either shade or bright shade, you always try to give them as much light as possible. But the problem is that the, their leaves burn very quickly. So you'll quickly uh, figure out if you've given them too much light. Uh, and then stenopias need to be wet at all times, not soggy, but wet. So this one in the scale uh, tends to be more on the shade side than average for a stenopia and more water than average for a stenopia. The fragrance is amazing. I mean, it's from a distance. Uh, unlike most stenopias, this is not necessarily my favorite. I would call it mothball. So you'll figure out what that means. Uh, and it has four flowers on this inflorescence. Uh, they can have up to seven. But again, this is a young plant. This is the first time it blooms for me. So I'm very excited. And uh, that's the girl I wanted to show you today. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.